Welcome to Sustain the City, the podcast where we talk about the joys and challenges of sustainable living. Today I have Christina Bennington with me and we are going to be talking about being vegan in the workplace and particularly with you about that being on stage slash on set. I'm very excited. Thanks for having me, bestie. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, and I've got a bit of an introduction for you. So Christina here is a vegan Northern Irish stage and screen actor and Pilates trainer. And I've personally seen her as a leading lady in both Bat Out of Hell and in Heathers. And you are breathtakingly wonderful. Thank you. And I'll take screen- that. <laughs> and then screen credits include Nova Jones, Falling Figaro, Queens of Mystery and The Admirer. So welcome, Christina. Thank you for coming on. Thank you so much. I feel like I should also say we are also best friends. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that is also important in my introduction. <laughs> yes, yes. Also, a very good friend of mine. We're lockdown friends that have kept at it, I guess. So Yes. Yes. Now much more. Oh. <laughs> than just a lockdown friend. <laughs> yes. Okay, so first off, mm-hmm. you're on Susty in the City. Yes. And I want to ask you, would you consider yourself a Susty person? Susty. Am I susty? I, I love that word. <laughs> it makes it feel very glamorous uh, to be sustainable. I think I try, I try my best. I feel like it's important to remember that we're not all perfect. Mm-hmm. But I try as much, like if I think about like right now, like if you follow me on social media at all, anyone who's listening, I am wearing basically the same clothes that I wear day in and day out. You know, I think I'm sustainable in that I try not to promote Mm overconsumption. I'll use that reusable coffee cup when I can. It's pretty much attached to me. And I'm heavily influenced uh, by my best friend, Nicole, Vegan Beauty Girl, uh, into finding more sustainable ways of living my life. So yeah, I'm I'm on the journey. Yeah, I'd call you quite a sustainable person. As far as like my friends go, I think Mm. you are like my most like susty friend because like I've always known lending is a good thing and like sharing things, borrowing out things, but you're the only friend I really like actively do it with. Yeah, we're big swappers. Yeah, well, <laughs> I was about to say, yeah, we swap books all the time, but I just read what you recommend. I yes. don't have books, so you just But I them. wear your clothes and yes. I've used many of beauty products that you've passed on and then become yeah. a loyal fan of it. Yeah. That's actually happened I forgot quite a lot. we've done that. Yes, I have given, yeah, I get sent a lot of beauty products for anyone listening, obviously as an influencer, mm. you tend to get too many products. You don't always know what to do with any extra stuff that doesn't work for you. And Christina is someone who tends to, to Nicole's get- shop. <laughs> and then actually that has introduced me to loads of like plastic free things I wouldn't have used before or, you know, sustainable, you know. Sh- like shampoo bars. bars. Yeah. You knew that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. um, so, and then I kind of adopt that. So mm. yeah, okay, I'll take it. I'm a sustainable person. Yeah. Susty, so susty. Yes. I think it's particularly lending. I'm trying to get that out with more of my friends as well because I feel like you've encouraged me to do that because I think- mm. it's I refuse started- to buy new stuff if I know my friends have a nicer dress than I would buy. Like, yeah. why would I just borrow that? You've given me a wonderful dress for it. It's in storage right now and it breaks my heart. Oh, I was yeah. like really thinking about it. It's, it's so like perfect nice. green for Christmas. I'm really looking forward to getting that out again. My other question was going to be, um, obviously a part of being a sustainable person, many of us consider is that you are vegan. Yes. Um, how long have you been vegan for now? I think about 10 years. 10 years. Long enough that I sort of forget that it's a thing Mm -hmm. and see it as kind of a small part of my personality very ironic I know for (laughs) anyone who follows me on social media um but yeah it's just something that it's just how I eat Mm. and how I I, and lifestyle it's not just food and but yeah 10 years yes very incredible and is it like 10 years like this year do you know what month it is are you celebrating Mm. no because I actually had a blip okay for a bit like two years in you can still for a couple of months yeah but you can still celebrate 10 years um yeah I can but I don't, I don't remember really. I did it because of I did a job with someone who encouraged me and inspired me to do it. And actually, maybe I should get in touch with them and say thanks for the 10 years. Yeah. Real life-changing time. What job were you working when you became vegan? I was doing a job called Finian's Rainbow, a little Irish show about leprechauns. Truly, that is what it is about. Um, in Charing Cross Theatre and okay. Union Theatre in London. And my friend Joe, who I was playing opposite... You know, I I did it for health reasons, actually, first of all. Mm. And um, he had said that I might find it interesting. So I was struggling with a couple of health things and I loved it. Immediately, I felt like my body had been waiting for this. I think everyone's different. I'm a very non-pushy vegan. (laughs) But my body said, yes, higher Mm. energy levels. Like my skin felt amazing. I was better at my job. And I just, in theory, never looked back except for that two months. Okay, so it was someone at work that convinced you. And then, so was the workplace there a very 
good place to be vegan because bear in mind this was like 10 years ago so around 2012 yes i think he made it seem really accessible okay because he his whole family had gone vegan so but i do remember when i first did it i'm pretty sure i just ate pret wraps every day oh yeah at that time they really led the field mm. and then you know it was very much salad and chips everywhere else but I do remember because you're on a show where you're always getting food on the go it was okay because I wasn't really eating in restaurants and the kind of done thing in the theater is like everyone runs out and gets M&S salads or oh. bread, whatever I say the done thing lots of people are more prepared than me and just pack things but mm. I was not there yet I was busy um but yeah I think it felt like a positive place to do that but obviously mm. not then when it's like a special event as per everything else it would be like cast party and I'd be like what can I have and be like chips uh, you know yes but that's fine and yeah I'd, you're okay with it yeah I'd bring like Oreos or something oh gosh I remember those days <laughs> just Oreos and vegetable samosas from Marks and Spencer's oh, I would still eat the vegetable samosas but I hate Oreos so much and I think Do it's because I really connect them why don't I know that I don't know. I, I don't mind them dipped in coffee, but generally, like, oh. they were my emergency snack, especially when traveling. Like, when I was in, like, Thailand, I remember you'd go to, like, 7-Elevens. Mm. The only thing I could find, at least, that was vegan there were Oreos. And, yeah, I just associate being, like, sickly hungry of them. And yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I just do not like them at all now. Um, so good. And Bourneville. Oh, yeah. I, I love that. loads of Bourneville. That's not vegan anymore, is it? Mm, I don't know I haven't checked because obviously there's much better chocolate now but yes yes at that time that's all um, I wanted yeah I really did not like the days of Oreos they were not good days moving on what was your next next big job after that I think I was on tour you're on tour after that yeah I, I did a tour of a show called Oklahoma okay yeehaw and that was different because it was a very sort of laddie young cast who were probably quite Unvegan, and that's when I kind of like blipped a little bit. I think I started eating eggs again. Okay, I think. And was that kind of probably for health reasons? I'm gonna guess, or just lack of. I think variety? I was just on tour, and I was just like, uh, yeah. And health reasons, it was a very intense dance show, and there wasn't really that much education then around how to do it in mm. a healthy way. And I think I was in a relationship at a time, at the time, with someone who like loved cooking and like made eggs all the time and okay. I was like shy and I was like okay I guess I'm eating eggs now like but then very short after that time you know I watched all the proper documentaries and then did it all mm. again for the right reasons okay as opposed to just health reasons I think health reasons can still be the right reasons for some people just yeah. um, if you are looking to do it for a long term then I guess it's probably not the reason that mm. then it was big up animals in the environment but yeah on that tour I didn't I, I just I found it more difficult because again like you say it was a long time ago mm. it was very much like oh we're in you know insert random town here where they didn't understand even what vegan was they were yeah. like so you can have eggs I'll be like sure yeah. <laughs> obviously now I wouldn't say that but at the time yes I did yeah I remember the days so I've been vegan since like 2007 mm. and there were times where I'd just be like oh yeah do you have a vegan option and the response would be like oh yeah I'd like vegetarian like they just or like it was fish like, and you're oh like, That's uh, the sure but yeah often people thought it was just like the new like veggie like the new yeah. slang for vegetarian I was like no it's something different um and they'll be like salad and chips yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I know you've had like a few variety of jobs over the years and mm. some where you're maybe like the leading lady and others where you're maybe working as an extra or whatever. And mm. I would like to hear a bit more about how much that experience kind of changes um, how you're catered for. Oh, I mean, massively. Massively. <laughs> I think it's interesting because I've done some TV jobs mm. before where I might be the only vegan on the job. Okay. And so then you feel really bad because you're like, oh can I maybe you know I did some stuff in other countries and stuff where they're not as good at catering for everyone mm. but I was just doing series two and three of Nova Jones for CBBC which I had done series one for before but this time the director of photography was vegan oh. so we had so many great vegan options all the time and you know like anytime we, everyone was having cake or chocolate like there was always a separate option for us mm. and because he you know he was kind of like the guy yeah it meant that I got by extension, anytime he was offered something, he'd be like, get some for Christina. Yeah. Christina, have you tried these? And I'd be like, yes. Um, but on theatre jobs, you're not really catered for anyway. Oh, aren't you? No, you uh. just do your own food. Um, but it is interesting then at like openings or press nights, mm. if you're the lead in something, obviously you're more likely to be like, can we make sure there's vegan options at the party? And they'd be like, yes. Of course, for you, we'll do it. Yeah. yeah. The worst thing is actually eating 
if you're playing like a big part in something and or actually not as big a part and you have to eat oh okay. in the show and you feel really bad being like look guys I know that I'm meant to be eating a burger now but like it's gonna have to be a beyond meat burger but don't worry it's gonna look the same and people are really good at it and but recently on Nova Jones on like one of my last days we had a big food fight and because I wasn't gonna have to eat it yeah everyone forgot yeah so everyone was sat with like ice cream sundaes and I was like guys is this this is obviously vegan right no. And everyone was like, <laughs> oh, no. and there was something happening. It was like really hot or something in Northern Ireland. It was filming in Northern oh, Ireland. God. And all the ice cream in Northern Ireland was like sold out. Like no one could get any ice cream. So we had dairy ice cream. And I'm now allergic to dairy, which oh. kind of happened by accident. I wasn't before, but then I accidentally had some a couple of years ago and had hives for like weeks. So I was like, okay, well, we're having a, a literal food fight. And I was also painted blue. So <laughs> if I was going to get wet, from the ice cream, the blue would come off. But also I was like, if this goes in my mouth or on my skin, potentially I've got hives now and I'm filming the rest of the week. So can we not? But luckily I had a cape on my costume. So when this comes out, eventually there's like the food fight starts happening uh-huh. and I just hide under a cape for the entire time <laughs> so that I don't get any in my mouth. And it's kind of in character, isn't it? Like that's a bit of what yes. your character would do. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I'm going to say yes. Oh, okay. I got away with it. I feel like it's tactical. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, wow. That's quite... That's quite a stress. Yeah. I've I've never had that at work. <laughs> yeah, you had to do an ice cream fight. Yeah, I was on um I was on Nickelodeon once, like their breakfast show as a child, and we were. But I wasn't vegan then. But we were, isn't that when we you collected those fun. really really vegan <laughs> souvenirs? I got um I did get celebrity burps in jars. Burps in jars. It's <laughs> my favorite fact about yeah. Nicole. I actually no. So I had um. Robin Robin Williams's and Quentin Tarantino's and I go back to my parents and I'm like what happened to those and they have no idea and I'm like but hang, I didn't see the show they actually burp in the jar yeah so they'd get a celebrity I should have done this with the podcast, do we count that as a vegan yeah a vegan it is because it's voluntarily thing. given and it's human sure. so yeah vegan, vegan burps in jars yeah okay to have. but <laughs> I just I have no idea what happened to them all I, I should, I'm currently like living at my dad's between homes, so I should actually like root through the garage, so fun. see if I can find any. But yeah, so when we were on there, I got like um, slimed or gunged or whatever they call yeah, it, yeah, yeah. and then we did like food fight. It was really fun, yeah. but yeah, if I were to do that now as a vegan, I'd just be like, "What's in the slime? And yeah. what food would?" The-? And I just clearly wouldn't be able to. It's yeah. way too many questions for someone who just wants to go on the show. Yeah, I hate being the difficult one as well. So I usually just say like my worst nightmare, even though I care so much about like eco things and. Mm-hmm. Ability and veganism still my worst nightmare is anyone changing the plan because of me oh, like anyone yeah. being like oh no we have to go somewhere else because there's no good vegan option I'm like guys I'll eat chips like I'll have a Guinness you know I'll have you yeah. know Diet Coke like I don't find it's fine I'll be fine like I still can't bring myself to be difficult in that way I yeah. don't want to like push anything on anyone that's like stresses me out so much but then at the same time it's quite inconsiderate if people book something and like, <laughs> there's a difference between like no good vegan option and no vegan option yeah. you know what I mean and I wouldn't really consider in this day and age chips and salad a vegan like if there's no main Delicious, they can't though. be booking there yeah no true but I love a chips and salad order still it's like nostalgia isn't it as someone who's just come back from a week in yes, France, true, sorry. <laughs> I'm, I still feel like low-key traumatized by it. Okay. But yeah, as as the odd meal, fine. As a yeah. week of dinners. Yeah, maybe um, not. Okay, so sorry. Maybe not. No, it's okay. It's fine. What about in the makeup chair? So I know that you are definitely a vegan that also cares about shopping cruelty-free. I do. Have you managed to have any influence there? or Because I know that was yeah. kind of a bit slower on the vegan scene. Sometimes I'm very lucky in that like recently on the job I was just doing Lovey Leisha who did my makeup um only uses cruelty free makeup okay I'm mostly vegan as well um but I'm like I remember back in the day most places would use mac mm. luckily I'm actually allergic to mac so it was a really great reason to be so like you genuinely are I wasn't yeah I actually like, am allergic. so I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't have that and a couple of jobs actually one of the jobs I did recently I was doing queens of mystery mm. um and they were for acorn and they were transitioning like the makeup team were actively trying to only buy cruelty free and vegan okay so I was able to recommend some brands they were like oh what do you like as a substitute for this and I was like oh well actually my friend Nicole oh. recommended me this and then like sort of spreading the word that way so I think more and more people are doing it now mm. um and I think there are quite a lot now exclusively makeup artists who yes. use exclusively cruelty free and vegan makeup but it is difficult sometimes you do have to compromise because again it's you know it's someone's job so if a makeup artist is like unfortunately that product does not work yet for what I need to do mm. there is not a good enough replacement currently and we are gonna have to use this yeah I can't say well can you be worse at your job 
yeah. for my ethics because that is the hard thing about a workplace isn't it it's like yes it's my life choice but I can't impact everyone's the product that we're making mm -hmm. because I have a personal life choice that's different than everyone else but it aligns more often than not but there has been some moments where I've just had to do it whenever. yeah especially I, if you're not very important in the job yes I was about to say I imagine like if you're the lead and you're pushing like can we try out a few new foundations mm -hmm. you know let's give them a go see how they go yeah uh, if you're an extra you just don't really have much mm -hmm. say and often you don't want to be difficult because you're gonna miss out on opportunities mm. so it's always it's not even being an extra like I've actually never been an extra in anything so I don't really know okay sorry what that situation is but like even if you're anything like if you're only in for a couple of days or something okay. you can't be like can you buy new products for just yeah. me being here for like a day is that called a guest star is that the word? Yeah, like yeah. That's, that's more American way, but it's just uh. like, you know, if you're just not a series regular <laughs> yes. in something, like if you're anything other than being there all the time, you can't be like, can you spend loads of money yes. on, because budget, budgeting is like a big thing. Mm. But yeah, the last job I was on, on Nova Jones, we had so many lovely things that I used anyway. That's really good to hear, because I know it's just, um, I know it can be really frustrating when people think veganism is just all about what you eat, and mm. if there are other things that come into play, it can get quite complicated. And yeah that's often when we feel like we're being difficult, even though mm. it's, you're still, you've still got your beliefs and your workplace is entitled to look after your beliefs to yeah. like the best of their ability. So it's, it's very, it's just a bit of a tough balancing act, I think often when you're vegan, but I like that these days, you're more likely to be forgiven for like one or two like slips, which are kind of out of your control. Whereas, mm. you know, like, five, 10 years ago, we used to joke so much about the vegan police and you'd feel yes. so guilty for like one or two things yeah, going I just, wrong. I just don't get it because we're never gonna convert anyone. We're never gonna <laughs> help anyone see that it's an easy, like I think you're the best at this at making it seem like really easy and accessible because you do all of that stuff in a way that it just feels like, oh, this is just normal life and it's very easy to do. Yeah. So I think like telling people off for anything, like even if people eat vegan for one meal a week, I'm like, that is so much better than not doing that. Exactly. So, you know, yeah. make some little choices, just have vegan chocolate instead of, you know, like yeah. little simple things like that. And then everyone's like doing a little bit, which is so much better than just being angry and judgy for no reason. It's too much. Yeah. Although I remember I went through a bit of a phase like that when I first went vegan, you know, you'd mm. be sat opposite someone and just being like, you know you're eating a dead animal, right? Oh, I did it too, okay. absolutely. <laughs> like I was, because you get so excited and you get so passionate and you watch all the documentaries and you think, oh, if I can just get everyone to sit down mm. and watch this documentary, of course everyone will see the light. But that's easy for me to say, like my favorite foods were always peanut butter and dark chocolate and black coffee. Uh, it, I didn't have to make a very big change. I'm gonna be honest, I thought for the first like three years that I couldn't have like normal peanut butter because it had butter in the title. That's so <laughs> setting for you yeah I bought like the big tubs from Hans and Barrett like the 100% peanut ones and I've, I've like because you thought they I had no <laughs> butter in them because <laughs> well I'm just what like, did they just say did they say 100% peanut and just didn't have the word butter I think so like 100% peanuts like you see that on the side things because it's like no no salt no sugar no <laughs> extra things it's so funny people listening uh Nicole's actually really intelligent so. <laughs> extra hilarious well I was like 13 at the time as well and I guess you just like you'll look at food like peanut butter and it's a different consistency your special sometimes. subject is maths so 100% yes. peanut I can see why that, that <laughs> yeah. appealed to you but yeah it just um and especially when you open a jar like that or a tub like that and then you look at a jar of sun pet you're like oh that looks like it could be blended with butter and okay yeah it made sense to me but then eventually I realized and it's not my, it's it literally so my number one feed group well, what, peanut butter. feed group. I just had a malfunction there because I was so excited. <laughs> food group, peanut, peanut butter. Yeah, mm. delicious. Mm. No, it's great. It's just, yeah, my world is like back on its right ends now that I know. Lovely. But you know how like in France, they've I think it's France they've now has been like, oh, you can't name vegan meats, vegan meats like Fucking vegan burger, crazy. vegan sausages, because people get confused. I'm like, that happened to me with peanut butter. Like, we need to campaign <laughs> for the yeah, butter but thing to. Also, like that whole thing is ridiculous. It is. Yeah. Do you know, like, no one's calling, like, a burger is not the word cow. I don't understand. Yeah. Like, because you can have a bean burger. And then How come we're like, allowed to say bean burger, but we can't say, like, chicken burger? <laughs> you know? It's crazy. To be fair, I do know some people who have accidentally, like, ordered, like, a chicken tacos or something and thought they were eating chicken and they were like, oh, wait a minute. What, so, it's vegan chicken? Yeah, like chicken, you know, with the little... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just thought it was real chicken. 
until like the last few bites. That's and, great. Yeah. We love that for them. Yeah, but it can be confusing. So I do, I see some grounds for it, but not enough to make laws. Yeah, it's absolutely yes. insane. Yes. Just, and it's hitting all the small independent businesses as well. It's like so silly. It's just, uh, it's just the government's taking sides with the like factory farming in the town of a crime. Industries climate they subsidize. Yeah. As opposed to ones out here yeah doing good stuff oh there's old militant veganism coming out in me again. oh no i think it's i just think it's good to point out though i'm just like i'm so mm. frustrated with the government i'm just like please just yeah please get on our side and just mm. help out the vegan companies over the yeah. ones destroying the planet but it's like why are we calling pork pork why is it not pig yeah do you know then you know if you want to call stuff what it is we're eating cows and pigs not beef and pork yes yeah, because you definitely have the disconnect as a child, don't you? Yeah, you don't know what it is. Yeah. You don't understand this animals. I just knew I didn't like looking at it before it was cooked. Mm. But like, I don't want to see it. I don't want to like, and you know, if it was bloody, I was like, I just knew I hated it, but I didn't know why. Mm. I was a vegan waiting to happen. Okay, mm. okay. And as a vegan, have you ever converted anyone else to, I, I don't think I've actually turned, not knowingly, I've never turned anyone vegan, but I think you have, haven't you? So many. <laughs> Big shout out, Daniel Buckley. Uh, no, I quite often see the thing that's different about my work to a lot of other people's work is I don't have a consistent workplace mm -hmm. I'm not seeing the same couple of hundred people or 10 people for forever each acting job is a whole new group of people yeah and I'm like day one I'm like who am I gonna get on this job and I don't try I just bring delicious things you know I'll order vegan donuts for everybody okay vegan cookies for everybody and everyone's like oh he's vegan and I'm like yeah whatever I'm like, I'm <laughs> like and I'm always like don't go vegan guys you don't have to like don't do it and I remember I lived with these boys when I was doing Sweeney Todd in Derby and Colchester and my friend Dan would always be like oh, I'm never gonna go vegan and I would cook him like amazing curries mm. and, he'd, and I'd be like you can add chicken you can add chicken just like have the curry but then and he would add chicken to it and I never said anything about it I just made him amazing vegan food and yeah. he would always add something extra and then he called me after the job and he was like yeah I've got yeah I've gone vegan yeah yeah, yeah I'm just trying it out <laughs> and I was like oh really good like and I just didn't really say anything about it and now he's the most vegan of the vegans okay you know he's like super into it and I think it's just I never ever tried to convert anyone mm. because it's like with anything you can't make anyone do anything they don't want to do yeah and no one is going to want to do something if you're like you simply must do this yeah or maybe some people are less stubborn than me but I don't know I wouldn't so I, I have a lot and I have I'm very lucky to have a big platform on social media and I know for a fact I've turned a lot of young people vegan who follow me and aspiring performers or theater fans. And thank you everyone for mm -hmm. um, trying out things I've suggested yeah. and food places and people are really into it. So I really love whenever I, you know, do a PR invite with you. I remember we went to the, like we did like the Athenian in Box Park oh, and Burger yeah. and we had this couple of weeks. The vegan we Euros. Yes, yes, so good. So and then good. like a whole group of people who follow me, like all were tagging me and going there like multiple times. And I love that I can have that influence in something that's fun and positive, but without telling people that they need mm. to be full-time vegans. I love to just encourage people to try something a little bit different. Um, I believe I've converted a lot of people to a lot of different treats, basically. <laughs> it's a lot oh, of yeah. different vegan like donuts and ice cream and chocolate and stuff. Okay. Um, yeah. Even when I went, so last office job I had, I was like working in IT and mm -hmm. it was a load of like 40 year old men. And I just don't feel like I had any chance at converting anyone. Like even when I brought mm -hmm. food in, they'd be like, oh, is that vegan? I'd be like, yeah, and they'd be like, mm -hmm. I do my sis. I get my sister too. She is a baker at home in Northern Ireland. And when I'm filming there or when any shows I know are in town mm -hmm. at the theater there, I'll send cupcakes or oh. cookies or I'll bring like for my wrap day on Nova Jones, I brought loads of cupcakes with my face on them, obviously, um, in character, not just my actual face. And like, they were all vegan. Mm -hmm. And I just tell everyone like, delicious cupcakes. And I'm like, by the way, they're all vegan. And that's how I do it. Okay, just like that. Yeah. Like they're vegan. Yeah, easy. Okay. Yeah, no, it works, works. Now everyone's gonna know I've just been manipulating <laughs> I bring it into Years. Yeah, I just I just can't ever have imagined like I feel like maybe the people you work with are more susceptible to it, but I can't imagine creative people, I guess. Yeah. Artistic people. Or maybe even just young or I don't know. I'm just like thinking about anywhere I've worked and mm. I think people have just thought of me as difficult or like, oh I find that's the I vegan find it harder girl. in my fitness spheres mm -hmm. in circles there because a lot of people, especially you know, not to generalize, but male fitness trainers are very much like a lot of them would be like, I just can't get the protein I need. And uh, I'm like, look how heavy I'm lifting. 
and I'm doing okay. Um, but then I would point them into, like I always try mm. to find the person that I think that person would find ins inspiring or closest oh, okay. to them. So I'm like, well, why don't you look at this person I follow who is also a male fitness trainer and is vegan and lifting heavier than you. And um, you know, that kind of thing. I'll find mm. the person that I think, cause it's all about it being aspirational, but specific. Because, like, I'm aspirational to a certain type of person. Yes. But a lot of people will be like, well, I don't want to live my life like that person. So, yeah, no, you know, you've got to be like, I'll point you in a different direction. Yes. But it has been more difficult. But I still have got a lot of people. Yeah. I have a family tree, a vegan family tree. Oh, just. Yeah. D like, I know that, like, people I've converted to veganism have found Joe, who turned me vegan, and been like, I'm vegan because of you. And he's like, whoa. And it's like, I've turned someone vegan, who's turned someone vegan, who's turned someone vegan, who knows that Joe told me to do it in the first place. Oh my God. And they'll come across him in the industry and be like, oh, you've <laughs> given birth to a family of vegans. <laughs> and this is where they've all come from. It's just been you guys, yeah. just like chuckling it through London. Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. No, no, well done. <laughs> Thank you. I'm like, I really want, I swear I've not turned anyone vegan, like not even my family members. I'm just like, what's going on? I think you'd be surprised. You, you encourage people, like we, everywhere we go, people are like, oh my gosh, it's a vegan beauty girl. All the time. And every single time they're like, I follow you and I'm not vegan. Yeah. I've never like- That okay. is my trademark. Yeah, my I've <laughs> very rarely yeah. seen anyone bump into us and say, oh my gosh, I'm vegan. I love following you. It's always like, oh, Nicole, you have made me go a bit more vegan, but I'm not vegan. Yeah. And we love that because that is exactly your target audience, really. Yeah, it's good. But I'm just always a bit confused. I'm like, yes, because I'm like, oh, you're vegan. Because you don't really know what to say when someone comes up to you and yeah. they're like, I know you, I follow you. And I'm like, oh, you're vegan. They're like, no. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know where to go from here. <laughs> like, I, but I love that because a little bit more vegan is amazing. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy. Well, even then, they don't always say, I don't know, sometimes they're like, I only eat a little bit of meat. Like, they, they get or a they're bit Or they're, like, encouraged to, like, try something. Yeah. And, like, that's that's amazing. Yeah. So you've probably, like, given, like, a percentage of veganism to a lot of people you don't yeah. realize. Yeah. I just lock them in. Yeah, life. clearly. <laughs> yeah, I don't have the full-on conversion. Would you be happy to help me out with an Agony Aunt segment? Oh, I'd love to. I don't know if I'll yeah. be very helpful. I think, um, you'll, I think you'll be surprised. I'm in so, Agony myself. Oh. <laughs> So I asked my followers basically if they had any workplace issues because I know a lot of people struggle. Mm -hmm. I would like you to help me help okay. them. We've got people basically complaining that like their work lunch is paid for by their work, but the canteen says nothing vegan other than chips. Mm -hmm. What would you suggest to this person? I actually, you know, lovely Lissa, uh, Lissa L, who is a vegan Instagrammer. She's been posting about this loads recently since she's like been back at work every day posting her work canteen okay, lunch. Yeah. And it has literally been salad and chips or like a baked potato with nothing. Oh, I hate baked potatoes. Yeah, like, I mean, chips delicious. But yes. You can, it is hard, isn't it? Because I'm like, I want the free thing. But this happens to me all the time on set mm. where there's one vegan option a day. And some days it's like something I really don't want, but I will always eat it because it's free. It's free, yeah. But then it comes to a point where I actually started bringing in, I wouldn't have set breakfasts. I would always bring in my own breakfast mm. because I decided that I was like, like again I always talk about how I'm very privileged to be able to be a vegan and care about sustainability yeah because I was like it is worth it for me right now to prepare this breakfast that I know gives me energy for the day and work yeah rather than have the free thing even though it's free so I think it depends on what your personal situation is yeah because for some people it might be like I need to have the free thing in which case I'd be like surely approach your workplace and ask if there's anything they can do it's so easy now yeah i i wouldn't like be happy recommend with it. them so many things yeah i would definitely go to my workplace in this situation i would say to them this is not good enough and also like veganism is a protected belief so you mm -hmm. can actually say like it's getting on discrimination that you're not getting a balanced meal like yeah. you can kind of intimidate them a bit with that and just Oh, I love, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah that's a bit of me <laughs> yeah I'm always I was always that person at work that would like demand more whether or not it would be mm -hmm. like if I'm getting screwed over with my salary or if it's like not good enough for the vegan options I suppose like you could just say why aren't all the vegetarian options vegan it makes their life easier it costs cuts costs I'm gonna be honest I'd be so scared of doing that because if the vegetarians found out you did that and then there was no but more cheese they, they know, would like just like make non-cheesy meals a lot of vegetarians vegan love cheese. cheese they love cheese so much and then they notice when it's missing I notice this because like when I'm on holiday mm. my vegetarian aunt ends up having to eat a lot of vegan food because yeah. like the chef will do one option and it'll have to suit us both and she'll just be sat there like 
guess I'm not having any cheese this holiday. But they can have cheese separately in their normal life. Wouldn't they as vegetarians who care about animals <laughs> and people rather that you had more choice? I think that's what I would do. I would say, why don't you make the vegetarian option vegan? I think I'd suggest it, but I'd um, I'd hide myself away. I would be prepared to upset some people. Then yeah. like the vegetarians are like, how come we don't get any pizza anymore? Like how, what happened to Pizza Fridays? Mm. There is a chance you could really hurt their options and they would not be happy with you. Yeah, or to be honest, like now I'd be like, guys, let me just give you a list of, so, so if it was me personally, mm. this is not an option for everyone. I'd be contacting brands. And being like, can you just send send some samples to me in the canteen and you know oh, okay. show them how to do it? Yeah, Something delicious. Bring in a couple of Beyond Meat burgers. Do you know, just be like, yeah, you know, here's this meat replacement. Why well, don't, I don't you even try think this? it needs to have a meat replacement? I feel like they can just do like, I don't know, like. But I'd be starving. Oh, I'm, I'm happy as long as it's like chickpeas and stuff like that. Like if the yeah, salad's like a, a proper, yeah, if it's a proper salad with actual like chickpeas or like yeah. other beans or whatever, then that's fine. I'm I'm happy with that. But it is like they can do stuff with lentils, like make a nice lentil shepherd's pie or Yeah, so whatever. basically what we're saying is it's not good enough. It's places. not good enough. No. Step up. And you are within your right to complain. You're not a difficult vegan if you say that you deserve better than Yeah, because you complain and if chip. the gluten free option was just lettuce, you'd be like, Well, I'm not gonna survive. Yeah. It's, it's not being the a picky eater. thing is like people think it's more difficult than if you're celiac or but it's like it's it's not. Mm. It's mm. just a you know, requirement. Exactly. And I think you should be catered for. Um, another problem we have. So we've got a teacher here and the food incentives for kids are never vegan. Always Haribo or chocolate cookies. Oh, still? Yeah. I feel like that is different now. I thought we had to be giving. How? Do we mean in supermarkets or in schools? No, I think this is in schools. So like when you're doing like. My school got rid of sweets. Really? Yeah. And that was a long time ago. No, I remember when I was at school, I remember particularly my German teacher would always give out a Harry Bow and I just oh. wasn't able to you like eat that. What we will say is change it to fruit pastels, vegan friendly. Are it, they? Like yeah. Mm. Do you know like Skittles? Or Starburst. I remember some of my teachers actually did care. Like I was very lucky and I remember one of my teachers did do I think it was Starburst mm. and then there was a chemistry class where the other class burnt I think Harry Bow to watch how it burnt and then oh, my teacher got that. in pringles because he knew i was vegan and i was just not expecting my chemistry teacher to one know that i was vegan yeah. and two to make an amendment like that especially mm. because it was just like a demo done at the front of class he wasn't asking me to do it mm. so i i think i was very lucky in that i don't yeah. i don't understand how i got so lucky with my school caring like that yeah i think it's an interesting one because if you're trying to transition kids to healthier things mm. i would suggest going like vegan sweets first because you can you know be like here's some skills here's some this but then there's also healthier food brands that are like refined sugar free and like just gradually transition them until everyone's like oh peanut butter the peanut That's, butter that is not dramatically healthier <laughs> i don't know what i mean and you definitely you know don't I mean? want that like, in the classroom but yeah. yes no, she's <laughs> not the one no i think but, you I know think... there's like a way of transitioning slowly until yeah. people feel like the thing they want is vegan yeah, so if you are a teacher and you want to, like, switch up your game, those yeah. are the options, Starburst and what was it, Fruit Yeah, pencil? other sweet brands are available. Other, other sweet brands too, but there are a lot of vegan sweet brands, basically, so yeah. there are things that Small can be done. Small independent ones, obviously, also. Oh, um, yeah. But if you want to do the easy ones first, yeah, and more widely available, especially, like, anywhere in the UK. Well, I was thinking main, mostly Starburst because they're individually packed, so, like, it's oh, easy, more that, hygienic yeah. to, like, pass around yeah, in a classroom and stuff. So this is something I think you touched on earlier, and it is about when you're at work and I don't know someone's celebrating their birthday in your mm -hmm. team and then you're going out to a restaurant, they want to go to this one place but they don't do a vegan option, mm -hmm. what do you do? I have called ahead to restaurants before and been mm. like, hey, I'm coming, I'm a vegan. I've seen this on your menu. This looks pretty easy to change. Could you just have that mm. in advance? Is this, is this pre-made or could you make that vegan? Because the worst thing is when you're there and you make a scene on the night. Yes. If it's something that's like a big event and you're going round the table one by one, and they're like, excuse me, can you just tell me if that's vegan? They have to go back to the kitchen like loads of times and ask and then they're like, sorry, it's a ready-made lasagna. Mm. Not lasagna, obviously I wouldn't pick that, but you know what I mean? It's like, it's yeah. it, it can be difficult, but I feel like if you just call ahead, then you're, especially if you're someone who has anxiety about making a scene mm. or being difficult, I don't, to be honest, no. <laughs> nowadays. Say, that doesn't sound like I'm you. like, oh yeah, give me chips, whatever. I don't yeah. care, I'll bring my own Tupperware. Like, I don't mind. As long think, as you don't change yeah. it for me, I don't care. I think that's the thing. I would always, like, if I don't expect them to have a vegan option, I won't go hung. I won't turn up hungry because I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm, yeah, I'd, I'd expect double eat. the worst. I'll eat before and then I'll just eat yes. again. Lovely. Two meals. Yeah. But that is a good point. I think if you just make it clear to your team, like, 
oh, just give me a heads up. I will message whatever restaurant and see if they do a vegan option. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause most places will cater for you if you message in advance. It may not be the best thing, but if you mm-hmm. don't want to be the reason someone changes their whole, like, it's my birthday meal. Mm-hmm. Um, and if it's like a cake in work or something, you know, when you're oh. like celebrating in the office, I would often bring something else myself. Yes. I wouldn't be like, can you also get vegan cupcakes? I'd be like, I've also brought these as well in addition yeah like i'll have that so you feel like you're joining in i do that as well but sometimes it can get a bit expensive and you do feel Mm. a bit begrudged because you're just like okay everyone else gets free cake Mm. to be honest back in the day i loved it because it stopped me just eating cake because i eat so many (laughs) treats like all the time and it just stopped me eating it literally you know everyone's always having a birthday yes and it's so much easier if you don't want something just be like i can't actually yeah or i won't it's actually you're supposed to say i won't eat that because obviously i physically could Mm. but I choose not to. Yeah, I remember on like my first office job, I actually had to ask, like there was this lovely lady, Karen, who always brought in biscuits for the mm. team. And she was like, what biscuits are vegan? So she started bringing them in. And then I was just eating way too many biscuits. Yeah. So I was like, can you stop buying the vegan ones? They're like, we've got ginger nuts. To. And I'm like, oh no. Oh no, she she could find, I think it was chocolate chip hobnobs were like vegan at this point. Ginger it was nuts. very, Digestives, very specific. are they still? Like loads. Yeah. Bourbons. Yeah. Bourbons. Oh, those. I don't know which ones yeah, the it. chocolate bourbons. bourbons. Yes. Yeah. Oh my god. I think those were the ones. Because you're yeah. like eating two biscuits at once. Delicious. So yeah, I wasn't. I'm so yeah. hungry now. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this was definitely like it was a high point, and then it was a low point. I was just like, mm-hmm. oh my god, I. Because when you're bored at work, you just go through them all, and I was yeah. like, this is not. This is not a balanced diet I'm eating anymore. It's just biscuits. Mm-hmm. That is a problem when work catering gets too good. Mm. Also, when they're like, oh, we've got a vegan option. There's one vegan. And they're like, oh, we've got you 12 donuts. No. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> How terrible for me. Oh, I do remember yeah, and that. I like, and I'm like, obviously, what else do we hate? Yeah. Food waste. Oh, no, that would never be an issue. But yeah, I, I'd eat it all. I'd be like, well, I can't leave it behind because eco-conscious. Yes. Or you take it home. I've done that before. Like, yeah. oh, I'll just take it home. So but yeah, we'd have like pizza nights and then no one would want the cheeseless pizza that's been ordered for me. And I'd love so that. Get more. Yeah, I'd get like whole pizza and everyone else is like stuck fighting for pieces but this would be a time as well where the office manager would forget that meat eaters like to eat vegetarian food so a lot of people yes, and they always would pick it because it's the best option yeah well yeah yeah so a lot of people don't like meat on their pizza and then the vegetarians get there or the margarita's mm. gone all that stuff is pepperoni and then they're upset and they're like great so we've got pepperoni or we steal some from the vegan like they're, yeah. they're never happy so i think people need to remember that as well as office managers that just because people eat meat doesn't mean they always want to eat meat mm. i've worked places actually before where they just exclusively cater vegan really yeah for everything because then it covers everyone oh if you make everything vegan and gluten-free everyone's cool no one's gonna go i need meat some people do on on tiktok some of the comments i get (laughs) but But yeah like they can justify that whereas yes we can justify being like well obviously i'm not going to eat meat Mm. but people can't be like well i can't eat this vegan thing like i don't eat potatoes you're like really Mm. pretty sure you do I don't know. I've worked with a lot of like 40, 50 year old men and they would kick so up sorry to so 40 much. and 50 year old men. They're getting a real bad rap here. <laughs> oh no, they deserve yeah, it. From but... what I've worked with, like uh, not all of them, not all 40 to 50 year old men, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah. yeah, the majority of them would kick up such a fuss or you'd have to listen to like a 20 minute monologue on like why vegans are just dumb yeah. and unhealthy and why we shouldn't be eating. And I'd be like, have you seen? see me do yeah. I look unhealthy to you you shared this thing on Instagram oh. and actually Amber the vegan shared it as well which I Zachary Bird my favorite the vegan butcher saying my primary form of vegan activism is being hot and <laughs> what can I say that's what we're out here just being Trying hot be walking advertising it's like <laughs> go vegan literally that yeah. but I think that's the best way to do it I do think being healthy being having energy yes you know proving that you can be alive and uh, be super active yeah. is the is the most inspiring thing you can do in a workplace yeah. when everyone else is exhausted and they're like oh i'm so tired of like that's so weird because i'm super full of energy oh my god this so wasn't me i'd be like oh my god can i get my fifth coffee but yes sure, sure. you're yeah i'm like i don't know i just like all the time feel great even if i didn't okay you would just <laughs> yeah vegan propaganda that is yeah 100 percent. i usually <laughs> do feel great i, I usually i'm kind of mm. feeling well yeah, I don't get ill often, so I like to touch that. wood. Let's yes, touch yeah. all the wood. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's touch all the wood. It's wonderful. <laughs> oh my God, those individuals that still try to guilt trip you saying, it's so tasty, are you sure we cannot tempt you? That is the 40 to 50 year old men from my experience. A hundred. I'm like, what are they trying like, literally, to Literally, like you? they'll bring like KFC into the office sure, sure, sure. and they'll like eat in front of you and like, doesn't this look tempting? Waving it in front of your face. I'd literally be like, there's a vegan option at KFC. 
There is no, I still, yeah. I've never been a fan. But yeah, it's just, I mean, I haven't tried it, but horrible I'm sure it tastes People do that. It's just like, I actually, if people were consistently to have that sort of behavior at work, I would actually report them to HR. If you speak to them and like, can you not wave meat in front of my face? Yeah. Um, can you not like mock I, me? Obviously, I'm quite confrontational. So, well, I say obviously, I don't, <laughs> <laughs> now you all know I'm very confrontational. So I would just be like, I, I, I honestly would say, what is it that makes you feel like you need to do that? Are you trying to intimidate me? Are you trying to make me feel bad? Because when you actually ask someone why they're doing something, they're like, uh, oh, I thought you were just gonna argue with me. And I'm like, no, I'm really interested. Like, do you need therapy for this? Or like, <laughs> why, why? And I think that's actually no. the best way to combat things like that. Whenever people are saying something that's like so weirdly aggressive and rude, I always just say, it's so interesting that you feel the need to do that. Like, I'm just wondering why. Like, okay, has and when ever... they have to explain their option. Yeah, their I usually reasoning. say, has that ever worked for you before? Like, yeah. have you ever persuaded someone to do something by okay. doing that aggressively? And they're just like, uh, no, obviously not. And I'm like, okay, well, why? what were you trying to do? And they're probably like, oh, I was just trying to make you feel bad. I think they're just trying to be funny. They think they're funny. Yeah, but then, but they're not going to say that. Well, I was just trying to be funny because oh. you'd be like, well, I didn't laugh. So like, maybe it didn't work for you. So like, is there another thing you were trying to do there? Mm. Like, I think it's always better to be curious than it is to judge. That's a good one. I like that response. To ask a question, just be like, why are you doing that? Yeah, I would. Maybe not my question would literally be like, can you get that on my face? Yeah. I think would be me. It's like, oh, this feels very opposite for us. Usually you're the <laughs> balanced, curious one. Oh, no. Oh, you just haven't seen me around the 40, 50 year old <laughs> No, it's just like at a workplace, I think. Yeah. Uh, especially when you're like the young girl there, you just have to be assertive at points. Mm. Oh yeah, you don't need to tell me twice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I would have no problem in that situation being like, can you not? I remember once a girl turned up with like McDonald's breakfast as well and it just stank so bad. I don't know what she had. Maybe I was hungover as well. I'm feeling it's very like sensitive. It was disgusting. And I was like, can you go eat that in the kitchen? She turned up late as well. And she's like, oh, but I've got to do my work. And I'm like, well, you should have thought about that before you stopped off oh, at That's McDonald's. Like the, when you have broccoli and people are like, can you not eat that? And you're like, fair enough. It doesn't smell nice. I love it, but I totally get it. Why oh, really? Like, yeah, famously, bro like cold oh. packed broccoli, not delicious, unless you're me. Okay. I love it, but yeah. yeah, it doesn't smell nice. Oh no, the only thing banned from like my, like the work kitchen was always fish. It would be like, can you mm. not bring in fish? Would always be like the email going out. Yeah. Yeah. Top tip for anyone in the workplace though, if you are in a place where people are bringing really smelly, like fish and eggs and stuff, if you just put a little bowl of vinegar, Oh, really? In the room, it like eats all the smell. Yeah. Oh, that is a really good so tip. So it doesn't stick around. We do that in my kitchen if my oh. housemate cooks something non vegan. Oh, I like that. Yeah. That's really handy. Yeah. No, You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you made that sound like I was more helpful than I was. No, that is really helpful. Like, sincerely, I know yeah. that is a really big issue for people when they're sharing communal spaces. Just put it out there. Yeah. No, that is a really good top tip. <laughs> I think my best workplace experience was though, um, where I used to work, there was this gay man from Brighton, really lovely Kev, and he once brought in all plants, you know, the vegan yeah, delicious ready meals. And you can, yeah. yeah, so you can put them in the microwave and they serve two people. So he'd bring them in and be like, Nicole, have you had lunch? And then we'd share that. And it was so, so sweet. And it I can like, be a bonding thing that like any yeah. other food, like if you want to share it, because like, food, it shouldn't just be like, moral standpoints all the time and stuff like it's a fun thing to share with people yeah and he wasn't even vegan he was just like vegan cure he's from brighton you know like that yeah. energy Very i've been open. to brighton once for one day oh yes, yes i know exactly <laughs> i know what it's like yes wonderful place for vegans okay and then let me find one more I find it very awkward when uh, places don't, when your workplace won't bring in any milk other than dairy. Like I've had that one workplace where mm. the only milk they'd stock in the fridge was dairy. I think that's really bad. Like, I honestly, as an actor, most people have oat milk. Exactly. So it's very, like, I rarely actually come across people who drink dairy anymore. Because um, obviously we're not cows. I'm guessing um, this has come from someone outside of London. Yes. Mm. Uh, or someone who works with baby cows <laughs> uh, who need dairy milk uh no yeah that's a hard one because i i would demand my office before to do anyway it. oh yeah i, I never same. drank milk I, like i say I like it was the easiest transition for me of all time so i don't know but i would i would absolutely say just get yeah. it yeah yeah i don't if you convince them to get like long life ones you know when you just say just order a big you know case of it this is how oh, much it's yeah. gonna be I, sometimes you need to do the hard work for other people so you can't be like can you source that you just go you order it from here it's gonna cost this much per month it's gonna be this this is what dairy is when you source it from here and then they don't have like an argument mm. if you're just like this is how easy it is just add this to your order and they yeah. don't have to do like the thinking or the comparison or the legwork yeah and if you just like literally put in the email like i have a right to free milk for my teas and coffee as much as everyone else mm. as well as anyone else with a dairy allergy in the office yeah and here's yeah. how easy it is and I think there's a lot of incentives out there as well now for people to 
be doing better things for the environment. So maybe mm. you can find something within your workplace where like they'll get more funding if they can prove that they're trying to do something that is more eco-friendly or environmental or you know like those yeah. kind of things although i remember when i was at work i was looking at like the iso accreditation and i believe like the environmental one like you only can really maintain it if you improve every year so you wouldn't make all your eco-friendly changes at once you would have to like pace oh. them out to maintain a certification and this was a long time ago so it may have changed but i remember that being like quite frustrating there are always going to be like these little things which just Red do tape. not make sense yeah. and you're just so frustrated by it just Tell them to sort it out. Yeah. that's Is that a really good agony ant solution for everything? Yeah. Tell them to sort it out. I think, yeah, I think we've solved, I think we've solved so many issues right now. I'm feeling very proud of ourselves. You've okay. solved <laughs> You are yeah. welcome world. Yes, well done. I'm hoping you have a lovely work environment going forward and hope people don't be mean to you for being vegan because I've had that at work and it's really horrible. Mm. Um, so just stand up for yourselves. Just go out there and be cute. <laughs> be best, cute. best form of vegan activism. Be cute. Yeah. Okay. I feel like that's a good note to round it up on. <laughs> go be cute, guys. Go be cute. And thank you for listening. I really appreciate it. And as a new podcast, we'd really appreciate reviews and shares and all the like. So thank you so much. Tune in again, please. And thank you for listening. Have a lovely day. Thank you so much. Yeah. And oh, and thank you, Christina, for being here. And find us on the socials if you want to follow our friendship. <laughs> yes, yeah. So I'll leave links to all that stuff in the show notes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Cool. Yay. Are we cute? Bye. Was it good? Would you listen to it?